Okay, I guess we're recording and it's all good. So, hello everyone and uh, this is the last meeting of Chaos Asia in June uh, 2024. Um, it's on 27th June and um, we are, um, you know, basically here to talk about uh, some of the initiatives that uh, you know, the chaos project and in specific, its Asian participants are interested in working on. So um, I am going to uh, share the screen right now, just a sec. Um, and uh, we'll walk through the sorry agenda items. Um, there'll also be um, an open floor for discussion after we get through the agenda items. There'll be plenty of time. So if you know, there are any, uh, so to say, any discussion points or any agenda items that come up during the course of the meeting, please feel free to add them um, in the list uh, or in the document that I've pasted in the chat. So just sharing my screen. Um, so uh, hopefully you all are able to see the screen uh, and it's not too crowded. Uh, so first up, um, the initiative that uh, we have been uh, working on primarily um, and have wanted to gather more, um, how do I say, gather more opinions around is the metric standardization. Now, the metric standardization initiative, um, uh, we've uh, since we wanted more Asian participation as well, uh, we sent out a doodle poll um which basically gave opportunities to um everyone uh to respond with times that are convenient for them if they wish to participate the poll is going to close by the end of uh this week that is tomorrow eod and uh we will be scheduling a monthly house uh sorry monthly call under the chatham house rules um on the in the second week of July, which is one uh two weeks from now, that is one week from now rather. So uh, the times are for a recurring monthly meeting, although only one week is given. So if you are interested, uh please feel free to uh submit your response right now. Um, we've also um <clears throat> we also had a chat with um the JDF. Uh, so as I communicated beforehand and uh, the material that was provided from the JDF, which is the Joint Development Foundation towards the standardization process with um, uh, ISO, we've actually uh, submitted a PR to upload those uh, prerequisites um, uh, document as well as the other material to the uh repo under wg metric models but i'm gonna pause there because that's a lot of uh info dump and see if anyone has any doubts or any questions Okay, uh, so next bit is around uh, collaboration opportunities. So one of the things that um, uh, that is important for us uh, during the standardization process is to also have people um, use these metrics and uh, metric models and give us feedback, right, um, across the industry. So the uh, one of our aims as a group has to also been to evangelize these metrics and metric models. Um, so I spoke with singing from um, the Open Culture Foundation uh, in Taiwan. And um, uh, one of the updates that I got after speaking to them uh, was that the COSCAP um, event, uh, will be applying for badging uh, 
uh, and we'll go through that process. And uh, she's also going to take a look at the metrics and the metric models. Um, and she'll be letting us know if um, they can be adopted at the OCF level. So that's, that's again, um, update regarding the collaboration opportunities. So I see Roland has joined. Hi, Roland. Uh, Hello. Nice <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's the second update. I'm going to pause and see if there are any questions on the second update that I uh, <clears throat> gave. Uh, moving on to GitHub issues and PRs, um, I had uh, announced last uh, during the last meeting that uh, I had submitted a PR um, against the Chaos Asia repo to uh, um, formalize our charter. Now, this is going to be um, um, an ever-evolving artifact. Uh, it's not basically going to be something that is like, you know, we're delimiting our scope in any way. Uh, obviously, given the start, given that this is just the start of the Asian initiative uh, for chaos, it's going to evolve um, in terms of scope, in terms of the work that we do over time. So, this is not like a stagnant object. So there's a PR that uh, outlines the kind of work that we do. If you want, I can open it up here. Um, I only received a single comment on this. Um, and uh, it would be great if, um, you know, any, if there are any co further comments on the charter. Um, this It's just outlining... Um, basically the kind of uh, things that we aim to do. Um, and like I said, uh, this will evolve over time. It's not going to be like uh, we are delimiting ourselves to only this or only that. Um, as and when we find that, you know, we have the bandwidth and we have the uh, membership to take on more work, uh, we definitely can accommodate for more of these out of scope things to probably come in. Uh, to our scope. So that's basically, sorry, I've got a bad cough here, but uh, that's basically all that there is from my side with respect to GitHub issues and PRs. Um, and I'm going to pause there again and see if anybody has any questions. If not, um, we can move over to the open discussion side of the meeting. Okay, so since nobody uh, brought up anything, um, I'm just going to throw the floor open for any suggestions, questions, or any uh, burning concerns that anybody has here um, regarding any of the work we're doing. Um, or if you all have any, uh, you know, inputs regarding any of the things that I've just spoken about or anything else really. Uh, hi, Divya. Yeah. Uh, can you please explain in a little brief regarding the metric standardization initiative? Sure. Um, so the thing with uh, the metrics and the metric models that we have currently the on chaos.community, they are just there. Like they are not formal uh, in terms of, you know, they are they are not registered as a standard and they are not basically uh, any, uh, like it's not an industry-wide accepted standard. Uh, normally when you talk about any sort of, um, when you talk about any sort of um, 
uh, things that are adopted across the industry, right? You, um, it would benefit uh, that particular thing. Like maybe it's a technology, maybe it's a tool or something. It uh, that tool or technology benefits from uh standardization, um, and you know the kind of uh, rigors that that standardization sort of puts the tool and technology under. So what we're trying to do under metric standardization is to um, take a couple of our metrics. Uh, firstly, start with a couple of our metrics when it comes to, um, you know, getting it standardized under the um, ISO. Uh, which is the International Standards Organization. I'm, I'm the that is not the exact name, but I so benchmarks as you all know about. So, um, we're trying to get that standardized, and for that we're collaborating with the JDF and uh, figuring out how to um work forward from where we are right now. So one of the things that has come up is that. Uh, uh, whatever we have currently is not in the proper format. Uh, it needs to be in a format that is very close to that of a specification. Right now, we have it just as a web page on chaos.community. If you go there, you'll be able to see the metrics and the metric models, right? So um, we, we need to have it in a proper specification format. And uh, then we also uh, need... <clears throat> some sort of feedback uh, which is why like I said those opportunities to collaborate um, are important because a lot of the voices that actually um, are responsible for um, feedback at the ISO level are um, going to be on an international scale it's not going to be uh, you know just uh, one specific uh, Pe one specific set of people who are going to decide. So there's going to be a lot of country committees taking um, a vote on whether these standards make sense on a larger scale or not. So we are trying to gather as many people um, uh, and as many perspectives as possible in uh, this uh, collaboration uh, side of things so that they can actually uh, sort of uh, adopt or you know try out some of these and give us feedback about what worked and what did not work Um, if there are any amendments we should be making so that they can better function so the whole process is to basically um understand whether our metrics and metric models actually can serve um you know, a real life industry use case, which they do, like we think they do. It's obviously taken shape because of a need, but we also need all those, uh, all that feedback coming in from various people so that we can um, amend it well. And then once we have the feedback submitted and we have like it in a proper format, we then submit it to um the uh, ISO and that process takes another nine months. So that is the whole gist of what we are working when we say metric standardization initiative. So we've just begun with the first step, which is to contact the JDF. The JDF is the intermediary foundation, which helps us connect to the ISO. And, and then we go through the other process, uh, like drafting it into a particular specification format and talking to the industry folks um, and then seeking feedback and then making amendments and then submitting it finally. Did that make sense? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Oh. So JDF is more connected to like uh, chaos in general, right? And not very specific to chaos Asia. No, no, no. Uh, so JDF is not connected to anything. JDF is um the Joint Development Foundation, which is a sub foundation under the Linux Foundation. Now, uh, JDF essentially um it deals with um these processes around standardization, and is um is tightly coupled to um 
I I would want to say the whole process of standardization, right? So they are one of those people within the Linux Foundation ecosystem that actually looks after this whole process. So it's not responsible for Chaos Asia. In fact, it's not even coupled with Chaos Asia. Um, eventually, um, what is going to happen is we are going to um. Uh, during the process of this uh, standardization, we are going to um, sort of have a transfer of intellectual property or, or uh, maybe, you know, not exactly a transfer, but some sort of um, legality which makes us um, a project under the JDF so that there is a easy facilitation of the processes because um, they are the people who are going to be applying uh, for the ISO standardization. So we as a project will go to them and they are the organizational unit that will apply for the process of standardization with ISO. Does that make sense? Okay, yes. And uh, in this initiative, like other chapters of chaos, are they collaborating with us like this Africa? Or... Um, so it depends. Like I said, um, the main reason why I think uh, I wanted uh asia to step in was um because there there were very few voices a and b uh there's already a very uh thriving ospo and um uh how do i put it yeah so there's a very thriving ospo community and an open chain community in asia uh specifically in the japanese and the chinese um and the korean regions so that is the reason why i specifically reached out to them a lot of people from other regions are interested. It's not that they are not. Um, in fact, a lot of the people who drafted the initial metrics and metric models are from the other regions. But specific to the regional chapters, um, I've only see a cup seen a couple of in uh people interested from other regional chapters, so to say. I'm not gonna say that um like from the African or the Latin or other chapters, I've seen a lot of interest, but from the wider community, right? Like the uh, European and the US uh, side of things, uh, they are the ones who actually created the uh, the metrics and the metric models. Does that answer the question? Yeah, yeah. sounds good for us. <laughs> right, Um. any further questions? around any of these. I didn't catch much of the last part, the first part. So the second part's probably not in context, but Sounds like uh, it sounds like you're doing all right. So uh, I'm gonna have to so drop far. off. Uh, yeah, soon, so but, far. Uh, Thank you for joining. Uh, it's always a pleasure having you around. Um, and one more thing, you were not there the last time around, so just wanna update you regarding one of the suggestions you made. Um, uh, around that open source communities database. Um, I think what we've decided. Um. Uh, and I, I ran this by the folks over at the board as well, um, that it would be good to have uh, this um, open source communities database, the whole creation of the database and the actual POC to be like made live with uh, the help of some program like Outreachy or uh, Google Season of Docs slash code. The reason being we can actually have like a point of contact established via that program as um you know uh, as a team we can actually get that um sort of team formed around it so that we can extrapolate it to other regions as well like we can collaborate with other regions but to first make that thing live and to get that in place um what we've decided and I'm, I'm happy to see if you have any suggestions is to collaborate with people um, via our Chi or uh, uh, any one of the other programs. Do you mean to grab the open source communities that use Outreachy and Google Summer of Code or do you mean 
use outreach and Google Summer of Code to technically develop the solution more? Yeah, so to basically um, actually get the solution live, uh, the whole database, like I have no problem doing whatever we, we have as the um, skeletal framework that you gave us. Uh, but given that we're going to scale um, to other uh, regions as well, um, it would make a little more sense to sort of start with that in mind and then, you know, develop a POC. And um, I am not great at coding. I, I want to say that out loud. <laughs> it's it's going to be a controversial take. <laughs> I'm not great so, at coding. Uh, but, so, uh, so just to point out from my... Sense. Yeah. Just because I have to go, just for, sorry, yeah. just from my point of view, the biggest issue isn't the code. The code is actually the easy part. Yeah. What's really uh, important and takes the most amount of effort is, does anyone want to add their name to the list so that they can be more visible? Because once exactly. you have that, you could you could get ChatGPT to write a scalable code in like a couple of days with the right person. So that's probably not the issue. The technical side isn't the issue. It's really the, if you're if we're keen and we want to work out how we want to get people to add their things, a Google form could potentially do that so that we could use that as our, as our testing. It's just that, you know, sharing that out and seeing who wants to be involved, who wants to do that is probably the bigger thing. Um, just, from, yeah. just from my point of view, the technical stuff is the easy part in, in this regard. Yeah, uh, so that is but yeah. another thing we've talked about. Uh, what we're going to uh, do with respect to that is, obviously, this is going to be an initiative we're going to socialize pretty widely, like we did with the badging and with the other initiatives in chaos. So we're going to talk about it and socialize it, but also we're going to seek out, um, uh, you know, these different community inputs via a Google form and look at existing um so i already have like a database that's existing so i can share that but also a part of the work would be to sort of do a bit of research as well like it's not like you said the code is easy um it's not going to be that difficult but also to sort of like do a bit of research and get a lot uh, get some more additions into that um csv or markdown or whatever we are, you are trying to use as the back end would be part of the project is what i was trying to do because it would like it would a invite new people into the community give them more uh perspective into what we do and b it would also sort of help them get started with open source that's that's what i was thinking but yeah, yeah that's a cool idea um a couple of other things that are kind of related they're not fully related, so apologies if this is going a little bit off track because i just got to go. Um, this is tied to the Chaos DEI thing, so we're going to try and get funding for a accessibility fellowship for the RSE Asia Australia Unconference. So the idea is that we'll find someone, maybe like a $500 Australian, um, see a, um uh, a five hundred dollar fellowship, so that someone could come along who's either blind or visually impaired, could go through our conference and can give us feedback in real time, and then write a report at the end to say were we really that accessible? Because that's something that we want to be able to benchmark. We've got some benchmarks are saying this is what we should do, and then there's this other one saying we could do. I know having someone going through who's part of the blind community and giving us feedback. The second thing is. I've written up a, um, a potential funding proposal that I wanted to send to you, to send to this group potentially, where it's about um, getting the blind and visually impaired community to do some uh, systematic review of ticketing platforms for conferences. So a lot of the time when you actually have to use a credit card or to do the payment, it can be really challenging and we don't really know, we don't have a systematic review of that. So that's something that I wanted to see if we could get funded. I've already talked to some conference organisers and they're actually quite interested because they feel that they're, they're, they're not able to make informed decisions and I think this would be really useful as well. So uh, just a heads up, I will be sending around a couple of emails just to give you an idea and you can Absolutely. sort of decide what you're interested in. So great work, Divya. Nice to see everyone there. Nice to see you, Leon. And good to see you again, Manuel. i got to go. I'll catch you later. Bye. Yep. Bye. Bye -bye. 
Um, so yeah, um, with respect to updates, I think that's pretty much it from my side. Does anybody else have any other questions? Um, no, I just wanted to uh, ask that uh, database that we were going to start, right, of adding. Mm -hmm. uh, did you, by any chance, get any good ways to do that? Because I never found any other way, like, apart from uh, maybe just using GitHub as of now. Like just to create maybe like a, a file and then you know later on we can put it into a website or something like that like how you showed us that example yeah so uh that's that's exactly what i was telling a, a little while ago that um uh i spoke to like elizabeth and a bunch of people um uh, like the other regional leads um they were all like i mean all of this sounds great um i mean if you want to invite community contributions it's great but i think for the technical side of it like i think whatever is there is great but i also need to think about it from a scalability perspective so i'm i'm going to leave the technical vision to um the person who's actually going to take up the job but from the uh, like maybe we could host it on github pages and see if it scales well as a poc um but given like uh i don't think we have a lot of uh, uh so to say funding to maintain that infrastructure uh, to maintain infrastructure for that but if we do we can obviously in the future shift it off of github so so far it's going to be github only as far as i know i don't think we're going to spend any extra bucks on that uh with regards to how we're sourcing like i said before a lot of the um work that is involved is going to be more of research around the uh, uh communities because there's a ton of them um and we'll probably have to like you know uh start some sort of github like we i already have it but uh, maybe it's time to sort of like collaborate on it within the chaos uh, org to sort of build out that build out some material that can be filled into that initial poc and uh, then you know have the uh, the guy actually a guy or the girl or whoever is joining in uh actually do more research on the kind of communities and the kind of open source communities we like included but did that answer your question yeah yeah that works So I'm going to essentially leave the technical vision to that, but the overall vision is to first uh, get an Asian database up um, with some entries um, that we have managed to gather um, before the whole program starts. Um, whichever program we choose to go with, it could be Outreachy, it could be uh, some of the other ones that um, are there after that, like Google Summer of Code, Docs, whatever. Um, then we uh, form a team around it, just like the badging initiative. And then uh, we extrapolate it to a more global audience because most of these people who are working with uh, open source communities in other areas have like information, right? They will have their own repos and their own uh, sort of uh, info, uh, regional community information. So I don't think uh, we need to worry about that as much. And we can always have like a contributing um, link on uh, the web page somewhere so that people can come in and submit the information. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, that's yeah. Yeah, that's what I, I also try to maybe not this week, but next week. Uh, the communities that I found in like uh, uh, Force Asia, so I could yeah. probably try to reach out to them. I, they, I have their leaflets, so if, if they have emails on that, I could probably uh, send them emails and introduce them to this. So then they can also like, or maybe they can share the data and then we can just manually add it for now. Yeah, and that is also great. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, reaching out to the Force Asia lead as well. Uh, because they are a community in Asia, essentially. And I think um, 
their experience would benefit us greatly um it, uh, not if not in the metric standardization but at least in the um other areas such as badging and uh, um, uh, like this particular um, you know bringing together asian communities because they already have a great breadth um in and great uh, spread in terms of the uh, people they are in touch with in the asian diaspora so I think I will get in touch with them. But um, if you are doing that, I'm happy for you to uh, take the lead on it. I have no problem. But just let me know if that's the case. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll coordinate with you because I have never done this before. So I, I'll okay, no problem. Yeah, you can let me know. How, yeah, uh, because uh, also this, did we ever consider FOSS, the FOSS United People? Oh, yeah, we, well, we've already done. Uh, in fact, they are... Uh, they are going to start helping us out with the metric standardization since another thing they are also interested in is tighter governance um at the level that they are working and so that's another thing that i've already approached them with so they've already submitted their response uh, for, for the doodle poll um rahul from rahul the ceo um has actually already done that so we've already considered them oh then that was Any other questions? Yeah, that's that's it for mine. If uh, there are no questions, I can give you all a not a significant portion, but at least like 15, 20 minutes <laughs> of your uh, <laughs> uh, day back. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if there are no questions, that is. Otherwise, I'm happy to stay on uh, and answer questions about whatever we've just spoken. Yeah, uh, for me, this is it. Yeah, not even talking about it. All right, then. I'll give you all back a not so significant portion of your day. um, And we'll see you in the next meeting then. Thank you so much. And have a great day ahead, y'all. Bye. Yeah, same to you. Bye-bye.